matches that we are seeing coming in from Milan. And to discuss the same, we have we are joined by Horma Sarabji, the editor of Autocar India. Horma, to start off with, uh, the EV bike that uh, Royal Enfield has launched, uh, did you have a chance to take it for a ride firstly? And given the fact that RE has been able to maintain their market share in the two-wheeler segment, premium two-wheeler segment, uh, do you expect this uh, bike launch would further boost their market share going forward? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, firstly, I, I, I'm I'm here. I, I'm not a Nikema, so I've just seen the pictures and the images which our team has sent. It's just a concept stage right now. Not many details on it, but I think uh, you know, I think um, uh, it's born out of a firm conviction from uh, you know uh, uh, Siddharth Lal, uh, who believes EVs are the way forward, and I think it's an interesting concept. I think uh, you know he's looking. If you look at the design of the bike, it's more of a light uh, kind of a very uh, not a very heavy bike, uh, a light bike which is more for urban duties, uh, because clearly uh, you know looking at the way charging infrastructure is is a challenge. I think uh, uh, these are still very much uh, let's say urban phenomena. That's what EVs are. And I think the uh, motorbike is positioned that way uh, to start with. Uh, later on, you'll have a scrambler, which will be more outdoorsy as uh, charging infra opens. But I think uh, clearly this is, uh, you know, let's say the next phase uh, for uh, infield, the next 25 years for infield uh, is what he says. So early days, uh, uh, but I think uh, clearly uh, he is uh, taking a bet uh, in the EV space. And uh, this is uh, the first kind of indication or proof of uh, uh, that bet he's taking, which we've seen in this flying flea concept. Um, hi, Armas. This is Anisha also joining in the conversation. But this is a you know larger question that I want to ask you. What's the future of two wheeler when it comes to the sustainability bit? Because of course we had the Bajaj coming out with the gas version. This is the uh, electric vehicle which uh, you know Royal Enfield has really announced. And then you had others like Ola and Revolt already um, in the fray. Yeah. Uh, what's the future of motorcycles and sustainability married to it? Well, I think, you know, clearly uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, adoption uh, is fastest with scooters. Uh, scooters, uh, you know, really make for great, uh, uh, are great for electrification uh, just by their design, their use case application, more as city commuters. You don't have to go too far from a plug. <clears throat> with motorcycles, it's different. Uh, clearly, it's a very nascent uh, segment so far. But clearly one that will grow because I think one has to assume that, uh, you know, uh, batteries will become uh, more power dense. So for the same size, uh, you'll have more range uh, and, uh, you know, you can even uh, lighten the weight. Uh, clearly the charging infra eventually, I think it will be slow, but eventually will come. Also, the way you charge a two-wheeler is a lot less complicated than you charge a four-wheeler. So I think uh, it's really seeding the market right now. Uh, but uh, I think uh, overall, uh, the um, growth of motorcycles won't be as fast as uh, scooters in the, I'm talking about uh, EV in the EV space. But I think everyone's, uh, you know, has to start somewhere. And uh, clearly, uh, eventually, as we all have to move towards uh, net zero, uh, everything's going to have an electric motor in it. Uh, so I think it's just going to be different paths and different speeds at which um, each segment evolves. But there's no doubt that, you know, the day for the electric motorcycle will eventually come. Uh, apart from the REV launch, uh, there's much awaited launch of Maruti Suzuki's uh, electric vehicle also that was announced in Milan. And they're expected to launch it in India in the first quarter of 2025. Do you, now we already know that they are late to this game, but do you expect uh, this EV launch to be a game changer for Maruti Suzuki? Well, uh, I've seen, we've seen the product and we've seen the specs and I must say I'm very, very impressed with it, uh, impressed with the design. I think what's clear and what sets Maruti apart from a lot of the other local players is this is a global product. 50% uh, of the volume is actually for export markets between Europe and Japan. So I think, and you can really see that even just in the pictures, you know, it is definitely a global product. And, uh, you know, uh, so that's why it's very compelling. It's very promising. Uh, we don't know what the price will be. The spec is quite high. So I think Maruti will have a challenge to price it quite low, looking at, you know, the battery sizes. It's got four-wheel drive, the power, all the features that there is in it. So clearly it's catering to a global audience. So it has to have a certain level of spec. But I think uh, it's very, very promising uh, for Maruti. And I think... Uh, in a way, they may be last to the party, but uh, sometimes uh, that does help because uh, 
I think they've been able to iron out a lot of the bugs. And I think even uh, the, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Suzuki himself said that, you know, they, they, they learned a lot uh, in this project. Don't forget, this was the first EV for uh, Suzuki. They never have an EV before. They've got a lot of help from Toyota on this. It's a consortium of OEMs that have done it. Uh, they did have problems. Um, the project was delayed by six months. Uh, they had problems with software, the CDC, which is the cockpit domain controller. You know, a lot of things were happening because don't forget EVs are is one massive bundle of software on wheels, which is really the big challenge for a lot of OEMs. So they have to get it right. And I think I'm quite excited with what I saw in the pictures. Uh, and, uh, you know, I can't wait for this to be launched. Uh, it does have a certain, as I said, a global appeal about it just from the design, the way it looks and the spec that it has. Can't wait for that product. Hopefully next year is when we'll see. But as you said, pricing will be important because they might be late to the party. But it's not always the first mover advantage. But, uh, you know, Armas, just taking a step back and discussing the overall festive season sale as well with you. Because at the start of the month, we were all worried that it's not going as great. The retail sentiment was sour. The discounting was high. But by the end of it, it picked up. What's your expectation of the overall demand? And what's your reading of the tea leaves? Is there a bit of a moderation of demand both in four-wheelers and two-wheelers? Yeah, look, I think one, we have to remember that, you know, we are at a very, very high base. You know, we are really operating at a really high base. And I think what has happened is that a lot of OEMs have now pumped in capacity or are developing capacity, you know, across the board, whether it's uh, Hyundai with, you know, picked up a Talegaon plant, whether Tata Motors, you know, OEMs are actually literally either setting up capacity or buying uh, uh, plants which are, uh, which uh, other OEMs who've exited India are, are, are selling. So uh, clearly there's a lot of capacity coming in and with that will mean they will need a certain amount of, of volume and production and that will put pressure, uh, you know, on the retail network. So I think, uh, uh, the good thing is that there is still a uh, fundamental demand is still there even at this high base. But I think consumers have become a lot more value savvy. They've also realized that car prices have just gone through the roof and they are really looking at uh, good discounts because I think in a way it's a correction of the prices because in the last couple of years uh, when there was a supply constraint, it was very much a seller's market and they took advantage of that by raising prices with impunity and we've seen prices really escalate over the last couple of years. I think we're going to see a moderation of that, be it in price corrections or in discounts. So, uh, but I think, you know, at the right price, there will always be buyers. So I think that's the key. It's not that demand has completely evaporated. And we've seen that in the festive season. Discounts galore, give the discounts and you will find uh, takers uh, for, for products. So that's one good thing. But I think from the OEM's point of view, uh, the party days of, uh, you know, pricing uh, vehicles, uh, you know, as uh, what they wanted, uh, those days are over. I think the consumers become a lot more savvy and is going to expect a lot more value from what the offerings are. Good news coming in from consumer perspective at least. Thank you, Hormas, for joining us and giving us your perspective on the new launches and uh, the festive season seals, uh, sales. Moving on. Now, 